Sarah, what do you say well, about the Republican platform? I've been listening to this, and I just got finished telling my friend Karen that my daughter, who lives in New York City, uh, who's about to be an independently employed theater director, went online last week to find an individual policy. And um, the best we could do for an individual high deductible plan in New York that gave her even remotely reasonable coverage was about $1,100 a month. Mm. And she's going to be making mm. probably in a good month a couple of thousand dollars uh, as a young theater director. She's got 80 friends probably in the same boat. I just don't see that this is real. Reed, do you um, have any reaction to the Republican plan? Um, the, you, you'll think I'm avoiding the, the question. The issue is, if you want to create the political equation uh, to actually get something done in Congress, what it's going to require are multiple different stakeholders who are all prepared to go for their second choice. What is frustrating is once you get beyond the moral outrage, what happens is that every sector, the, 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 the private insurers, the manufacturers, small business, uh, the advocates for, for individuals, everybody has got their own 18-point plan. And what we have learned over and over again is that when people get wedded into those fundamentals, it can only be employer mandate, it can only be individual mandate, it can only be if, if you expand Medicaid and S-CHIP, if it is only, if it is only. What happens is you never get to the calculus of actual legislation that can get passed. So what I'm sort of saying to you ultimately is it is inappropriate for people to start laying down uh, what camp they are in at this moment. What is important is for people to make a public commitment to be part of the coalitions to actually get something done and stop arguing about all these uh, ideological uh, uh, must-haves. Okay, so you've successfully evaded the question. <laughs> <laughs> the ball game's over. In deference to Tom, Sox win 5-4. Mm. <laughs> now, Artie and Sam have left Fenway. They're right outside the stadium. They're having a bratwurst and beer. <laughs> now, Susan, you were sitting in the row behind them. You want to tell them about the Democratic plan? Yes, because at Dismal Medical Economics, we actually did a side-by-side -side <laughs> looking at the plans and attempting to take what is real in those plans and what is fantasy. Our ratings show that all of these plans have a substantial element of unreality to them. Part of it is either Democratic or Republican holy writ that is being recycled uh, from past debates. Part of it is fantasy based on a lack of understanding about how things really work now. And that's why we came out, our editorial page at Dismal Medical Economics uh, said much the same thing we just said, which is that we will have to wait until after the election, see how things settle out between who has the presidency and who has the Congress, and then engage in a realistic You're discussion about how to Artie put this together. You're not helping Artie and Sam as they munch down their bratwurst because in reality, they're trying to figure out who to vote for. Well, I'm telling Artie and Sam that Don't this is... Don't get sick. <laughs> Put down that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get sick. That's the beginning. <laughs> that this is going to be a long process. Mm. And, and as important as it is who is the president, it's also going to be important who's in the Congress, who takes Senator Frist's place. What, do people, what is the sentiment that people walk away with, a feeling of what the American public would really want here? And also, importantly, some kind of mechanism to get people closer together on the same page, because as a nation, we're not there now. Let me, can, I, can I jump in just to, on, the, on the democratic plan right now? The universal is, is the goal. Um, there are mandates, there's an employer mandate. The second big issue is the, the promise, a plan for the uninsured that equals that of the United States congressman or Medicare, that that's promised to everybody. And the third component is, is the increased involvement of government, expansion of Medicaid, expansion of SCHIP, just overall increased government. And those sort of three components there, I think, are the, the gist of the plan that, that they have to be thinking about. And if I were them, what I'd be thinking about the universal makes sense. But have, has that plan addressed what I mentioned earlier, that you promise everything, but you still have costs going up three times wages, which hits the, the, the consumer, the individual? Is there anything uh, in, in that 
plan that, 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 that does that. Bob, yeah. employer, employer, reaction? I think business has, is as willing to get out of what it's doing now as it's been than I remember. Uh, even more so than probably the early 90s, just simply because the costs continue to compound. Uh, and so I think I might call it, well, let's make a deal. Uh, but the deal has to be what's on the other side. And that's why I think uh, I'm really, really in agreement with uh, Senator Frist that unless the Congress can work together on access and cost at the same time, it's going to be difficult to sway the business community into believing that what's on the other side of what isn't today is going to not be worse than today. Now, let me quickly stratify to say you got to, when you talk about the business community, you got to divide right away between those that offer coverage who are in a very different situation than those that don't offer coverage. And it's really a large, middle large versus a small employer. So I'm speaking really now on behalf of the, those that offer coverage. Charles, reaction to these proposals? I think the, uh, I think they're both political bromide from both parties put out there so that if somebody says, do you have a position on health care coverage, the answer can be yes. Um, I am completely in agreement with Reed that the whole debate about health care in the U.S. for the past 20 or 30 years, with the possible exception of the Medicare Modernization Act, where, you know, whether you like it or not, the president basically said, I'm going to stake my presidency on this, and it will happen. And as a result, it did. That's what you need a president to do if you're going to get the coverage question resolved. Until that happens, it ain't going to happen. Health of the Nation, coverage for all Americans, is a project of the New England Journal of Medicine. It's a production of the Fred Friendly Seminars at the Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism.